Good morning, team. What's up? It has been a awesome week. It's going to be an awesome day. We are getting after it. It's Money Monday today, and I've been a little bit lax on the old videos. I know it. But, guys, five tips today on maybe what, considering being a rig welder, okay? Five things to maybe think about before you decide you want to be a rig welder. <coughs> and uh, these aren't, you know, set in stone. These are just things that I have realized and have gone through and maybe you guys are gonna love them and maybe you're gonna be like oh, maybe that's not quite for me but five things on being a rig welder here we go before we get started in this video guys this video is brought to you by boom nation these guys are freaking phenomenal I've been playing on their uh, their app for quite a while and I tell you what it is gonna be the new way of getting your foot in the door or finding people if you're an employer to find people that can come in and be qualified and do the work that you need done so guys go check out boom nation i got the link down at the bottom and uh go go find me on boom nation just jacob schofield or schofield welding um we're we're just rolling around over there so guys thank you boom nation we love y'all and uh we think you're doing a phenomenal job so number one jobs are short term now i get a lot of questions and a lot of people thinking that they're gonna go to trade school, they're gonna come out, they're gonna find this steady job as a rig welder and uh, and just work there for 20 years and that's gonna be what happens. Well, I'm not saying that it does not happen, but it is like the rarest of the rare, all right? That will probably not happen in your career. Now, I've been a rig welder for going on 12 years now and you would be blown away by the by the, uh, the W-2s and the 1099s and all that that come in the mail every year, all right? So usually, um, except for a short period of time, for about six years, I worked for the same company. But before that, we were working for a few weeks here, we'd get laid off. We'd go over here, we'd work for a couple months, we'd get laid off. That is how a rig welder works, all right? The money is good, the money is phenomenal, and, but, it is short term. It is not something that you're just going to go, you know, burrow into a job or into a company and you're just going to stay there for a long, long time. Now, don't get me wrong. There are people that do it, but it's rare. So, guys, keep that in mind as you want to be a rig welder. You are going to get laid off. You are going to need to go find more work. And uh, to me, that's part of the fun. That To me, that is part of the, you know, the American spirit. We're here to uh, benefit and to create money and capitalism and it's just ugh, i love it right i love it it's my favorite it's the best so anyways that's that's number one jobs are short term as a rig welder uh, but the money is awesome number two it is freaking expensive to get started now you can do it for on the cheap which like getting into the older machines and getting into an older truck and you know that's a great way to do it don't get me wrong i think it's an awesome way to do it the only thing that happens is now you are worried about things breaking down you're worried about you know machines quitting you're worried about trucks quitting you're worried about your tools not working and sometimes going into the jeep guys getting something reliable getting you know this is a pro 400 it's a beautiful machine, but it costs some money. <coughs> but I know that thing's gonna start every day. This truck, it's 2017, I bought it brand new. Was it a wise decision? Probably not. I should have probably bought a couple years old truck and done it that way. But I bought the new truck and have had zero problems with it. And so I can show up to a job and I can commit to a job and I know that I can be there every day. The downside to that, this truck has a payment if I don't work I can't keep the truck so these are, there's just a, a scale of what you you know what you're willing to do and how much you trust yourself in finding work so anyways number two it's expensive but good equipment is expensive and things that don't work actually wind up costing you a lot of money so pay attention to that Tres. There is nothing funner than traveling and seeing new country. 
but you will do a lot of flipping traveling. <clears throat> there will be times you will spend, you know, a couple weeks in a spot and you'll either have to decide if you want to do a hotel living or if you want to pull the fifth wheel up there. I always personally preferred the fifth wheel. I can bring my family with me. Um, <clears throat> I could, you know, I cook, I, Liza could cook, she could have the kids, everything was good in the fifth wheel. Now I've done the hotel living too. There's nothing wrong with hotel living. That's what we're doing right now is um, we are actually going up and staying in a hotel. <clears throat> it's expansive. In a hotel, you are gonna spend some money to stay there. You're gonna spend anywhere from 300 to, you know, 600 bucks a week to stay in a hotel, <clears throat> depending on where you're at. I mean, if there's a huge oil boom going on or a lot of work in that spot and the hotel rooms are getting slammed packed, they're gonna charge you out the hoorah to get a room, but so are the campgrounds. So definitely a plus and minus to both of them. The fifth wheel, you gotta hook onto it and you gotta drag it somewhere. You gotta set it up. You gotta, you know, do all that stuff, but it's also your own place. So that was one of my favorite things about it. It was my own place. All my stuff was there. And uh, man, there's just, guys, if you love to travel, this is by far the best career you can get into. I flipping love seeing new country. I love living in new country. And uh, that's part of being, you know, going to the job is you're gonna be there for at least a couple weeks, hopefully. Uh, and so you're gonna be able to experience that area a little bit and kind of get a feel for it. And, and it's pretty awesome. Now there are downsides to certain areas. There are certain areas you got to pay attention to and avoid if that's kind of what you do. And then there are other areas that are just freaking awesome. You know, traveling gets you out there to see new country and you get to experience new things, new people, new food, new cultures, new just everything. So it's awesome. I love traveling. It's one of the best parts about being a rig welder. For, for taxes. Guys, there are certain benefits to being a split check uh, welder or like a company welder where you get like an arm pay, you get a rig truck pay, and then you get like a per diem usually. There are certain benefits to that. You normally do not have to worry about your taxes because they're taking care of them. The downside to that is you are going to pay triple. I mean, holy smokes, you will get, the taxes are gonna get pulled out of your check, but same with contract. If you are a contract welder, you have the ability to write off more things like the machine, the truck, all that stuff. You can write that stuff off or depreciate it, which I don't understand none of that. I have an accountant. I hire an accountant even when I was split check. I had an accountant and he took care of all of it. I gave him everything. He took care of it. He was awesome. I highly recommend an accountant. But guys, <clears throat> you are going to be making you know, if you can stay busy all year, you can get into the uh, the six figures. You can get into, you know, two, three hundred grand. So there is a huge benefit to it. Number one, you're going to be traveling a lot to make that much money. And number three or number two, uh, there are going to be a lot of taxes. So there are ways you can keep more of your money legally. And I would just hire an accountant to help you, get you a good accountant. Now there are some accountants that will just punch the numbers in and be like, okay, you owe this much. Well, why? And then there's other accountants that are like, oh yeah, they understand the tax laws. They read them every year. <clears throat> there's new ones every year. There's no way me and you are gonna keep up on it. So they take care of it. You give them all your receipts, you give them everything. They'll get it all plugged in and they'll say, all right, this is what you owe. This is what we're depreciating. This is what we wrote off. This is, you know, they'll have a whole list of stuff for you to, to look at and they'll be able to explain it to you. So, number four, taxes. You need to be paying attention to that. Hire an accountant and, uh, and do it the right way. Number five, you are going to meet some of the best people on the road. That is going to be where... They talk about like a, like a welding family. They talk about all this stuff. And I'm telling you what, guys, there is such a part of community when you are on the road, when you meet people like that. I just, that was one of my favorite things is we'd be at the campgrounds 
and everybody would throw a big barbecue, you know? And so like, you'd go to this trailer at night and you'd go eat over at their place. And then you'd go to this trailer and eat at their place. And then everybody would come to your trailer and eat at your place. And it was just awesome. There's a family on the road everywhere you go. Every job has one. So <clears throat> just, uh, just realize that, you know, you're gonna meet a lot of really, really good people, but you need to also be paying attention to the people that are a little bit snaky. Don't get involved with those people. Stay away from those people. Don't be mean, don't be rude, don't be nothing like that, but pay attention to them. So anyways, guys, that's my five tips on being a rig welder, five things to look for as a rig welder. <clears throat> and uh, guys, I tell you what, to me, it's one of the best careers a guy could get involved in. There is so much versatility in it. There's so much ability to find work. You can weld anything if you will put the time into it and learn how to weld it. And uh, you will be able to stay busy and stay fed. A welder is needed. Um, but like I said, there is there are downfalls and there are up and ups to it. I don't know how you say upfalls, but anyways, I I wouldn't trade it for the world. It is probably the funnest thing I've done, and I enjoy every second of it. So everybody, be blessed. Boom Nation, don't forget to check out Boom Nation. Link is at the bottom and uh, be a great way for you to get your foot in the door, start talking to people, start getting in on a social media app that is actually tailored to blue collar workers. So guys, go check out Boom Nation. We love y'all. See ya. See ya.